Cataractcoach.com. Audience poll, pupil ring or not? The maximum pharmacologic dilation is about four millimeters. Is that enough for you? Now the patient also uses Tamsulosin, also known as Flomax. That's a medicine that helps the patient with his benign prostatic hyperplasia, but it also makes the iris nice and floppy, minimizes tone of the iris, inhibits dilation, you know the routine. Here's the case, I put anesthetic inside the eye, we're gonna use our dispersive viscoelastic and try to accomplish some viscomedriasis, just like Osher taught us. Try to inject that right at the pupil margin to expand the pupil, and that looks pretty good. So maybe now we've got a four and a half millimeter pupil. So let's make our main incision. Now remember, once the viscoelastic leaves the eye, we're not gonna have that same viscomedriasis. So there's the main incision. Now let's make our capsular rexus. The key here is do not make a baby capsular rexus. You want a sufficiently large capsular rexus, five to five and a half millimeters. And that means when you do this capsular rexus here, the edge of it is going to be under the iris. Yes, it's true. You're not going to be able to directly visualize the iris. Now, I get it. You would have used a pupil expander, a pupil expansion ring, iris hooks. We're not going to do that here. I'm telling you right now. You also notice the patient has a peripheral iridotomy there at the patient's 12 o'clock, the, the uh, left side of your screen. But after a little bit of a pupil stretch there, using nothing more than the caps, rexus, forceps, and the chopper, by the way, no special instruments, now we've got about a five millimeter pupil. So now let's do our capsular rexus. Poking with these forceps, let's create a five and a half millimeter rexus. And that means, watch carefully, you're not gonna see the edge of the rexus. You've got the Jedi mind force. You know where it is. You don't have to see it. Come on now, you're better than that. So let's get that rexus complete, nice and easy, going across, a lot of control. There is no issue here. And now we've achieved a five and a half millimeter caps rexus. And look at that. You didn't see the margin of that rexus even once. Now, bounce salt solution, slow but steady, hydro dissection, get that nucleus out of the bag. We want that nucleus up out of the capsular bag, nice and easy. And now we're gonna have a lot easier time getting it out. So let's get comfortable here, adjust our instruments. We're going to get that phaco probe and we're going to bring this cataract up through the pupil and let's chop it into smaller, more manageable pieces. So here it comes, coming up, chopper behind it. Let's see, can we get two halves? Looks pretty reasonable, let's keep going at it. And we'll stay in the central pupillary zone. We don't wanna to touch the iris. You wanna stay very central. You wanna stay at about the iris plane. And the goal here is just to keep the phaco tip occluded. When you're listening to the phaco machine, it shouldn't be going That low pitch sound is low vacuum. You want it to go and then it's staying on high vacuum. Forgive the crazy sound effects, but I have to get the point across. You need to listen and be cognizant of the vacuum level. And your goal throughout nucleus removal is to keep the vacuum level as high as possible. Because remember, it's a peristaltic pump. And when the vacuum is high, it means by definition, you're starting to occlude the phaco tip. And that's the goal. Occlude the material on the tip. Get that cataract piece on the phaco tip. And just like that, we're done. Nucleus is gone. Looks great. So we'll switch over to the IA probe for cortex removal. Now we don't have the best dilation. I'm the first one to tell you. The pupils come down even smaller than before. That's okay. Here's what we do. We keep mental track of where is the cortex. And as we go in the capsule bag to remove it, we're careful to make sure we get all of it. Now we can use the chopper there, look at this, and lift up the iris. And you could do that in all quadrants just to make sure. But even easier is to keep a mental track of what has been cleaned up and what has not. 
Now, this is not the final be-all and end-all. After the eye oil goes in the capture bag and the eye is still full of viscoelastic, we'll use the chopper one more time just to make sure, lifting up the iris again to get that insurity that the capsular bag is, is, is completely intact, that there's no lens material left in the bag, and that the rexus is going to overlap our optic. So now we're looking at a three millimeter pupil. It doesn't phase us. No big deal. Injector cohesive viscoelastic deep in the bag. Remember, injected in the bag as well. Now we got the pupil back to about four millimeters. I'll take that. Technician has loaded our lens. I'm sure she's done a beautiful job. Here it comes. Single piece acrylic lens. Aim it deep. Make sure it goes under that nasal rexus. And slowly but surely, let's advance the lens. Use the chopper now and dial it in the capture bag. And we want to make sure, you have to make sure, that the entire lens is in the capsule bag. You don't want to leave the lens halfway in the sulcus. So let's look. Lift the iris up. Hey, 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 looks pretty good. Go into other quadrants. Lift it up again. And you can ensure that there's no more retained cortex and also that the optic is behind the capsule axis. And this is easily done here while the eye is still full of viscoelastic. So nice and easy, looking all quadrants. I'm pretty happy here. Now there was that small piece in the subincisional area. I'm 99% sure it's already been removed. But what we can do is let's make it 100% sure. So here's how we do that. Let's go ahead and lift up that subincisional lens edge, the edge of the optic. Get underneath the optic. Remove viscoelastic. Okay, now I'm pretty happy. And if you really want to, we can also split this handpiece, this transformer eye handpiece, and we can put the aspiration probe directly in the subincisional space just to make sure. And I can already tell you it's clean, but let's just humor you. There you go, just to be sure. So this is a case where I definitely, as you saw from the video, do not want and do not need a pupil expansion device. I don't want a pupil ring. I like the metal you can ring. I don't need it here at all. Not worth spending $125 and not worth causing iris damage. And I don't need iris hooks either. I can do a beautiful job just like this without the use of those devices. So now at the end here, tell me what was your vote in this audience poll? Did you want to do this case without a pupil ring, without iris hooks, or did you want to use some of those as a crutch? Whatever makes you happy, you should do that. Thank you for watching.